right, well, we are going to go ahead and do the Season 2 PvE and PvP tier list. Maintenance should be happening around like six seven hours by the time y'all watching this video i think depending on how i scheduled it but like i said this first half is going to be pve tier list and then the second half will be pvp if you do want to skip ahead but we're going to take a look at the upcoming season two characters that should be dropping or obviously after update for tonight and then we'll get into the noel sevens later on so if y'all are new drop a like and hit the sub as well let me know where would you rank these characters on your own tier list if you had one and uh, if you do want to make your own tier list in the comments then feel free to do one as well let me know but when it comes to season two characters, a lot of them are pretty good, and a lot of them are like, like somewhat okay. I would definitely say they are more PVE than PVP, I, I think. But anyways, let's get into it. The first unit being, we're gonna go ahead and talk about Kyoto, right? So let's do, let's talk about Ky uh, Kohono first, right? Kohono is an amazing, amazing healer, but, <laughs> but it's very unfortunate that she is releasing during the same time as season two Charmy. So. As much as I want to say, you know, go ahead and pull her, I'm not going to because this unit, like I said, is not... When it, if you're comparing her and Season 2 Charmy that's going to be releasing during the exact same time, then without a doubt Charmy is going to be the better healer. And I feel like most of y'all by now have probably been using SR Charmy. In my opinion, if you already have SR Charmy built up, you're not going to use this unit. Yes, she does have barrier on her, you know, skills and everything on her second skill, which can be great. Increased defense as well. It's not too bad. But just comparison to the other healers and with the other units that you probably already have built up on your team, most likely you will not be taking this unit as much as I want to say she is great. She is, but I feel like for PvE wise, you're not really going to be focusing on her if you already do have other units such as SR Charmy built up as well, or even Season 1 Mimosa, right? So PvE, in regards to that, you're not really going to be using this unit. So I'm going to go ahead and put her in B tier as much as I think she is a fantastic healer, and she is, it's just... Why would you go ahead and put out crystals for these units when you already have, you know, when you already have other units built up? So it just doesn't make sense for free to play uh, players to go ahead and summon for her. And plus, bear in mind she is a general pool unit, so she will be added to the pool uh, eventually after she leaves, right? So that is Kohono. Now, when it comes to the boy Kyoto, different story. He is, without a doubt, I think he is the best blue single target DPS unit that we will have in the entire game. Uh, for those who don't know. He is pretty much Jack on steroids when it comes to his ult, right? So, Jack in comparison, let me go ahead and show y'all real quick. So, Jack is a unit that can nuke as much as he possibly can, but uh, attacks actually granting a 10% increased crit damage for each present buff the unit has. Whereas Kyoto is applies a 15% increased accuracy buff to each self affecting him. Is this different? They changed this. I swear to god they changed this. This was not like this the other day. Um, for Kyoto, is it really this? Is it increased accuracy this entire time? I don't think this is increased accuracy. Unless they changed it for some reason, then I want to say it was damage dealt overall. Uh, so I think Pride One does have a little bit wrong and confusing. I'll have to double check later, but I want to say this has always been 15% increased damage dealt buff for each present buff he has. So in that sense, this is really good. And plus, upon having two more uh, buffs, then he does get a guaranteed crit. Which is the only unit in the game that has this, by the way. So you don't have to worry about getting crit rate percentage. Because you are guaranteed the crit. Um, and once as you know, you're always going to have two or more buffs the way that he is designed. But overall, everything about his kit is just damage, damage, damage. And I really like that. So for raids or just general PvE content, you are definitely going to want to take this unit. He is fantastic. And if you're trying to get like some crazy, crazy nuke numbers off. Like for example, the current Belty Geos rate that we have. Or actually by the time you're going to watch this, it's already gone. But... For that raid, this unit is absolutely disgusting, completely like one turning the entire phase. So yeah, if you set him up correctly, he can easily, easily, easily hit for a million plus. And uh, that's why he is one of my, I wouldn't say he's one of my favorite units, but he's definitely up there in terms of just overall damage. So I'm going to put him in A tier as well for PvE. And then when it comes to Gifso, he is an amazing, amazing support type unit for SR. So if you need a SR unit, uh, and he's definitely going to be more PvE than PvP because he does apply... What is it? 40% chance to uh, grant all allies, 15% increased damage dealt to bosses, so definitely PvE related for 2 turns. And then all attack for 2 turns as well, so for an SR unit, he is extremely, extremely good and just super valuable to have if you want to use him for your PvE content. So for raids, uh, Hall of Illusions, anything like that, you can take this unit and he will do wonders. In fact, you will actually need this unit for level 85 Hall of Illusions whenever Global does get the update. So the fight against Heath, I already talked about this before on stream. But uh, this was one of the units that you do need to run in order to kind of 
nuke him. So yeah, if you do get him, eventually you will build him up unless they decide to release another unit that can do similar things. But yeah, Gifso, an amazing support type unit. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in A tier as well. I love his kit. I think he offers amazing, amazing value. Very similar to Sally, but um, in the sense of more PVE than Sally is kind of like both PVE and PVP in that sense. But yeah, still really, really good. Now, when it comes to Season 3 Asta, this will be a free unit that we will be getting tonight uh, as part of the Season 2 event. So if you want to check out the Season 2 event video, I have it on channel already, but TLDR, you are getting this unit for free. And he's actually somewhat decent now. <laughs> Now, 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 unfortunately, this unit um, isn't anything too crazy. Uh, he does, he is a defender unit, and the best part about his kit is the fact that he does kind of get a double taunt, or you have a chance to get double taunt on the ultimate, which is kind of good. And then he does have the whole transferring all debuffs uh, from your entire team to himself, and then he does cleanse it. So, in that sense, that is really good. But, because a lot of people, are, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but... For some people, you have probably already started building up SR Asta, and in that sense, he is better. But because of the fact that this unit is free, we're not going to complain. You don't have to put any crystals out for him. You do get him in his skill page. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put him in A tier. He will be an amazing asset to use. Uh, it's just if you've already started building up SR Asta, low key you do not need him. Uh, season three Asta that is, but. He is free, so if you want to, you know, if you have free resources lying around, then feel free to throw it onto this unit and get him up. He will be a really, really good asset. So, yeah, that is that. If he wasn't free, then easily I would have put him in B tier. Hands down, I would have put him in B tier. But because he is free, then I'm going to go ahead and put him in A tier as well. Just, he's free. Why not? Extremely good unit. And then that does leave us with the remaining four units, right? Season 3, or so I'm sorry, Season 2, Noel, Charming, Ghosh, and then obviously the boy Julius. Ghosh, A tier, okay? For PvE related, this unit is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, he does offer... The second skill of his is just insane. Plus, increase all attack level 3 to the ally for 2 turns. 60% chance to apply increased penetration and then intense sunlight, which allows him to do more damage, which is insane. And it can stack up to 3 times. Irremovable, by the way. And then, just insane. Really, really good kit for a support type unit and just allowing units such as like Noel, Yato, whoever else to just kind of go in and nuke which is crazy so with that being said he is going to be a tier for a support but i know a lot of people are not trying to get him he's going to be the unit that you're aiming for the least when it comes to the season 2 banner so if you get him don't be mad it's just i know a lot of people are trying to aim for charmy or noel but uh if you do get him do not think of it as a loss he's an amazing support type unit for pv so definitely 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 work on him if you do pull him and then charmy S tier, okay? Believe it or not, this Charmy is S tier, and the reason why is because she does offer continuous healing, and the continuous healing for PvE is so, so clutch. So, unlike Mimosa and pretty much every other healer in the entire game, or, let me double check, does Ki uh, uh, Kahono offer continuous healing? She does, but only on the first skill. This Charmy offers continuous healing on the second, on the first skill, second skill, and the ultimate, which is insane. So, if you don't know what continuous HP recovery is, is Instead of having your heal activate on you know the heal assurance, so for example, um, SR Charm in Mimosa, they heal the unit that you want to on that turn. So whenever it is their turn, then they will heal. But as opposed to Charmy, all you need to do is proc off the continuous healing once, and then for however many turns that is activated for, that unit, so for example, if I activate continuous healing, and then Rodus, whenever his turn does come around, he will automatically be healed off of that continuous HP recovery, as opposed to Mimosa, I would have to wait till Momosa turns come around and then go and heal and heal Radis. But yeah, this is just crazy. So I like this. This is so broken and um, definitely a key unit for both PvE and PvP. So if you need a healer for any type of content you are taking, then take this unit. She will be the best healer you can have without a doubt. Unless you have Momosa built up, then yeah, definitely go with that. But Season 1 Charmy, or Season 3 Charmy, I'm sorry. Really good. Just broken, broken, broken. And then obviously, <laughs> Noel, right? I mean... At this point, I've done like a million videos by now, and I know y'all don't want to keep seeing that, but this unit is insane. I mean, just best unit in the game. She is free, high damage multipliers, high damage output, barrier, counterattack, blusk of water. This unit does it all, so y'all already know why she's S tier. And then Julius, I mean, obviously, right? So this season is low-key stacked in comparison to every other season in the entire game. Actually, yeah, that is true. This is probably like the best season for players just to start playing because you, you can most likely get your hands on all the meta units in a quote-unquote free way and be good 
but Julius is best unit in a game by far when it comes to damage output. Um, him and Noel are very, very similar in terms of just like overall damage. Um, not damage like that, but Julius is obviously single target, Noel's AoE, but they just both wreck PvE content, PvP content, whatever you need. Julius does have a guaranteed stun on the ultimate, applies 20% decreased stamina to the enemy, gains an extra turn if he does defeat one, so that is just insane. Titan skill, increased speed, level 3, afflicting time stop as well, so you do get rid of these skill too, and this cooldown, which PV you're not really worried about unless it's like a raid, but for gear farming stages, you're not worried about that at all. And then he just has insane damage, and then resurrection every time he does die, only once per battle by the way, so... And then if you do get him to LR plus 5, which I know a lot of people do plan on, then he does revive with 100% HP instead of 45, so really good. And then he does have a special skill on his uh, passive to where every 15 speed the unit has gains a 3% increased damage, which is very unique, very true to how the character is in the anime, and just overall insane. So that is going to be the PvE tier list. Now let's go ahead and get started with the PvP, right? Alright, so this is the PvP tier list that I've decided to come up with. Low-key, I just kind of moved like everyone that was in B tier down. Uh, but as you can see, A tier does not have a lot of PvP units. Now, when it comes to PvP, I, I was taking into account the meta of what it's going to be and what the meta was on JP and Kara and how I know things are kind of going to be for the most part on Global. So with that being said, I already know what team calls a lot of people are going to run and this is what I've come up with. Now, Unfortunately, like I said already, like I already said already when the game first came out when season 1 content was here, I told you that Yami and Asta will be falling off because of how the units will be releasing afterwards. These guys, yes, they're great for season 1, yes, they're great for early on progression and just gear farming and everything, but when it comes to PvP content, unfortunately, these units will fall off and the only one remaining is Mimosa. Mimosa having that lifetime kit of the resurrection and everything, just makes her extremely valuable and she's a really she's really a unit that will never fall off for the most part so she is unless until they decide to release another unit that can have a resurrection with a better kit mimosa will always stay in s tier um and then when it comes to the rest of the b tier units i low-key put them here you're not really going to be seeing a lot of these guys in pvp uh unfortunately so y the only one you might see the most out of this entire list Low key might be real or Sally. The only reason why Sally is because she is going to be in conjunction with Noelle and people trying to get off a one turn nuke. But if you miss the nuke and everything, then you kind of just crap on that team. If I'm being honest with you, so in that sense, yes, I know what trying, I know what people are trying to go for. But um, and then real obviously was a stun mechanic. But you have to bear in mind a lot of people are probably going to pick up Rodus because they already have Lotus and Mars. Rodus does have a stun prevention on his ultimate, by the way, if you didn't know. So. It's going to counter stun units such as like Rill and whoever else, so you have to bear that in mind. And then when it comes to the A tier units, I was debating on whether or not to put Ghosh in B tier or A tier, but I left him A tier just because I know he, not only does he have, is he going to be blue typing as well, I have to keep that into account. If he was red typing, then I probably would have put him in the same tier as B. But because he is blue typing, then there aren't going to be a lot of, you know, um, type advantage counters to this unit. So he is blue. He is going to be, you know, a great partner with Noel and kind of just surviving a little bit more in comparison to Sally. And plus, I do think his kit is well better suited for most DPS as opposed to Sally. She is great, but she only kind of, on the ultimate as well, especially, um, is not really helping the team out like that. If you, Unless you are running red type units for the crit damage, but if you're not then I do think Ghosh has a better kit overall, you know, providing that damage over time immunity, increased accuracy, as well as the Fortify to take less damage, which is really good. So in that sense, I do like Ghosh, and I think he is going to be an A tier support for PvP, especially. He auto is going to be an amazing counter to Noel if you are able to pull it off as well. Um, he does have AoE for the second skill, which can be very handy. So if you want to try to do like some, you know, one turn nukes with this unit, then you absolutely can. But yeah, I, I think he is a really good unit, and... I know a lot of people don't plan on getting him as well, which is the crazy part. So if you do have the unit, he will be great. Um, I do think he's probably going to be the first one to fall off out of these A tier units, if I'm being honest with you. And then when it comes to Fauna, the I Man I Sun units, the only reason why I left uh, Riot and Late together in this A tier is because if you are running these guys together. If you're not, then unfortunately they do fall off as well. But uh, if you do want to run these two together to do the partner combo ultimate, then yeah, they are together A tier. But if not separately, then they will go down to B tier. So I have to bear that in mind. Fauna. 
fun on putting down an A tier, uh, B tier, I'm sorry. I just don't think this Zenus can have any value in, in PvP, especially you have to be very, very considering the fact that she does have two AoE skills. And if by that time you do not get rid of Noel's barrier, you will get counterattack, and this unit will probably get one tap the following turn. So, with that being said, Fauna is a very, very cool unit and everything, but yeah, having that double AoE skill, if you don't get rid of the barrier by then, then you're gonna get counterattack, and this it's gonna leave her in a kind of vulnerable state. So, um, and then A tier, I mean, y'all already know why Lotus best debuff unit game, Mars, extremely OP tank, most of res, barrier constant heals damage damage and then speed voice right so that is pretty much it and then obviously i forgot about william but william is also going to be another speeding as well if you want to take that it's just he doesn't provide anything magic attack related if he does he would have been low-key as s, s tier but because he doesn't then i'm going to go and keep him a tier just to kind of help out these two boys if anything uh but overall that's not bad it's not a bad tier list and if you think i missed or anything like that let me know in the comment section but I feel pretty confident. Um, so for free-to-play players, this is who you need to look out for for the most part, all right? But uh, I'll go ahead and end it there. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you are new. Take care. Peace.